Hi everyone and welcome to the Zen Blonde Podcast. It's your girl Lauren and today we are joined by a very special guest who's literally calling in from the other side of the planet. She is the breakout star of Netflix's Byron Bays and she has a new single called Liars coming out on March 31st that I know we're all going to remember to pre-save on Spotify. Welcome to the show Sarah St. James. Hi, hi, thank you for having me. (laughs) Oh my God, thank you so much for being here. It is literally so surreal seeing you on camera. I have been watching Byron Bay's nonstop. I think it's the best new reality TV show on Netflix. Yes, it was my first time doing reality TV. Um, And yeah, it was just a wild experience. So are you from the Gold Coast? Yes, from the Gold Coast. Um, So it must be a crazy experience for you, obviously, looking on reality TV for the first time and then having your face plastered everywhere. Like, are you getting stopped in the streets? Like, what's what's it been like for you? Um, it's been, uh, I, to, to be honest, I spend a lot of time at home. <laughs> um, when I go out, yes, there are people who like, I think Australia, everyone's really chill. So um, I've had a couple of people come and chat to me, but mostly they're just like, you know, oh, and then they look back and then they look at you and then they're like, hey. <laughs> but everybody's actually like quite good, especially here on the Gold Coast. Everyone's real chill. So yeah, it's been it's been good. I loved your and Alex's friendship. And he actually told me on DM that it was the best thing that came out of the show for him. Have you guys seen each other since the show aired? So um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it was this thing from the start. Alex is quite a hard ass. I think you can see that on 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 the show um and that is really how he is in real life um and i i I've, i'm really good with energy so i kind of picked up that he has a soft heart and i think at the start he didn't really like me or really think anything of me but i was like we're gonna get along like i'm gonna i like, gonna like break into that hard exterior and <laughs> and be friends so that's exactly what we did and he's like i'm so glad you kind of stu- stood by me and um and yeah we have an absolutely beautiful friendship we see each other all the time he's he manages the influence of side of my business and um yeah, we also have a personal friendship. We go out and drink together and yeah, <laughs> get up to all kinds of stuff. So <laughs> it's good. He said there was a specific moment that you two became friends and that I should ask you about it, but he didn't say what it was. Uh, well, look, I um, I think we're early on when we met and, um, and he realized that um, I had his back was when he was um having that big fight with jade and um and that was yeah a big um a big moment for him where he realized that um you know how much i loved and respected him to kind of be in his corner but he could be talking about that time we got drunk and had a bath together i don't know (laughs) oh my god your cat is so cute yeah, this is Gypsy. <laughs> she's 11. I've had her since she was a baby. So she's my actual, my actual child. And um, yeah, she's usually really camera shy. So she didn't make it onto the show because whenever there were cameras around, she would just run and hide. Like she's usually terrified, but she obviously doesn't know that this is being filmed. So. <laughs> so what was it like for you watching the show back? Um, the weirdest thing about it was how not weird it felt, I know that sounds so strange, but I've been, you know, I've, I've shot vlogs before and a friend of mine who's an influencer, I've been in her vlogs a lot. So I think now, especially with everybody being content creators, um, you are used to watching yourself back. I think the most surreal thing about it was not that I was watching myself on, on, on Netflix, but um, that I'm getting DMs from people in like Japan and Brazil and the US and everything. It was cool to just go like everyone everywhere gets access to this. And that I think was the, the biggest trip for me. Sometimes reality TV can be skewed. And I was curious to know if you thought that the people on the show got the edit that they deserved. Yeah, for the most part. I mean, there's light, there's light and dark in everyone. So I think we've all had our fair share of not so amazing moments and also amazing moments. Um, but ultimately I do think that, um, they, they try to edit people as accurately as possible, even though, even, and, and it is accentuated too. Obviously you have to remember that we show, shot eight episodes, uh, 44 minutes each, which is about six hours worth of material uh, to pull like months and months of 
filming from. So obviously they are highlighted and everything is exaggerated a little, not exaggerated, but, um, you know, you're showing all of the crazy moments. So people do take this tiny snippet of our lives and form judgments of people. Um, and you know, I think as the seasons go, hopefully if we get to shoot more seasons, people will be able to see more of everyone's personality. So this is just a very small snippet. It was so sad seeing you being bullied by the girls when you initially entered Byron Bay and how unwelcoming they were towards you. I could definitely relate to being in situations like that in my life. And I was just curious, after the show, did any of them reach out to you to apologize for their behavior? Um, yeah, so uh, since we finished filming, it's obviously quite a while ago and we've all had conversations. Um, I, uh, yeah, I've, I've spoken to all of the girls separately. Um, obviously we flew to Sydney last week to do some promo before the show. So it was the first time most of us were there, like seeing us all together since filming wrapped. Um, but we all have each other's phone numbers and we have been in touch. I, I actually spoke to Elle yesterday on the phone. I checked on Instagram. Elle is actually in Venice where I live. And I was curious, did Nathan ever reach out to you? It's a question we're all wondering. Um, yeah, yes. There's, there's been a lot going on since filming finished. Um, we never, we never lost contact. Um, and yeah. <laughs> Do you see things between you and Nathan as more of a friend vibe now? Um, uh, that's, that's a hard one to answer. Obviously, like at the moment, we're just going through this whirlwind, um, <laughs> life change with everything. So we are keeping things private, but I'll say things are very good. Um, and yeah, he's, he's an incredible, incredible human. There were so many unanswered questions by the end of the show. I felt like it was cliffhanger after cliffhanger. Do you happen to know if Elle is still engaged? That um, I do know, um, and I'm not sure whether she's talking about that publicly. So I think that'll be a question for her. I don't want to answer that just in case. Oh, no worries. I love your mom and I love seeing your relationship with your mom. I was curious what she thought of the show. Um, she's proud of everything I do. She's super supportive, even if she doesn't understand it. Um, and it, I think it was great to get her, I know I'm sidetracking a little bit, but it's great to get her on the show because then she could see how everything worked and she was really, really keen. And then when it came time, when there's cameras and everything in her face and she's like, oh, this is like a lot more daunting than what she expected. So it was cool for her to get to see what I was going through a little bit, but that made her excited to watch the show. And I was really nervous because I've never even so much as sworn in front of my mom. Um, I, I have very good etiquette when it comes to that, to um, dealing with my mom. And so she didn't even know that I did swear. And <laughs> I had to warn her beforehand. I was like, this might not be for you, mom. Like, it's like, there's a lot of adult stuff in here. And she's like, that's okay. And then she watched it and she was like, oh, <laughs> she's like, I'm really supportive, but this is like a lot for me to watch. And I was like, I told you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so funny even like the um you know the comment that i made in episode two about not wearing undies and stuff and she was like oh my god she's like blocking her ears she didn't want to watch and i was like well i did warn you <laughs> i love that that's so sweet um i was curious were you actually born in seychelles my friend was just there and it looked absolutely incredible i want to go yes the seychelles are the best i was actually born here in australia um, my mum immigrated um, over to Australia before, obviously, before I was born. Um, but we grew up really close with her, um, my grandparents, my aunties, uncle, cousin, and, and really embodied the Seychelles culture when we were growing up. Why do you think everyone hated on the Gold Coast? And I also feel like you got a lot more hatred for being from the Gold Coast than Jade did. And I found that super interesting. Yes, uh, we welcome everybody to the Gold Coast. Please come and visit. We love having people not from here come here. Um, th that was a funny one. And honestly, like that irritated me a little bit. Um, I think what it comes down to, I'm stoked for Jade that he was able to fit in really well. Um, but I think that's, you know, that is an issue that we deal with that um, typically people are more judgmental of girls than guys and I know it's a complicated issue and it's you know a lot to get into now but um you know we've both come from the same place we're both kind of outsiders and straight away he was quite accepted which I'm very happy for him but you know you do have to ask the question why why the same thing wasn't um 
the same treatment wasn't given to me. And even it, what comes down to, um, you know, the way you dress and the way you talk and the way you act. If Jade had said there are no underwear comment, it wouldn't have, no one would have batted an eye. Um, so yeah, that was, I think as a woman, it's something that you are kind of aware of that people are a lot more critical straight off the bat of those kinds of things, especially if you're saying things that are a little bit risque or um, unconventional and, you know, your outfit choices. I find the whole thing hilarious because every Byron girl I know comes to the Gold Coast to get their beauty treatments. <laughs> so <laughs> this is the place to go to get their lip fillers and their lash extensions and all that kind of stuff. So the whole thing is just utterly bizarre to me. But that rivalry thing between the Gold Coast and Byron is is very much a thing. Um, it's crazy. And something that I honestly didn't know until I I moved there. I always thought that we were one and the same because geographically it's not that far away. Um, and I always thought, you know, Northern Rivers and the Gold Coast, we're all in one. Um, it, we're separated by states, but we're, we're quite close. So yeah, that was a, that was a huge one for me that was, um, that spun me out. I wasn't expecting. Yeah, there was definitely a double standard in the show and I felt like you were unfairly blamed for a lot of things, especially Elias versus Nathan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was, that was a weird one. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I definitely copped a, a fair amount of blame for causing issues between the two of them, which obviously from the start, I didn't want, um, nobody wants that. I didn't come in there being like, fight for me. <laughs> but, um, but I, from what I could, from what I could gather and obviously coming in as a new person, and I didn't know them. And, but I, I had heard, um, some stuff you see on camera and some stuff not that they had a friendship and that they'd had this rivalry and that had this history before i came in so to try to pin it on me it was just a little bit ludicrous but it was interesting to see the spirituality and social consciousness of these people but on the other hand they were so elitist about being from byron and hating on you from being from the gold coast it didn't seem like a very spiritual way to be to me at least yeah, um, it it's, was very weird for me too. Um, I I have a lot of friends on the Gold Coast who are very in touch with their spirituality, who also um, might have non-conventional jobs or ideologies on on the things that that people in Byron. For I mean, there's a being spiritual and being conservative, and I think it kind of gets blurred a little bit there, where they think that to be spiritual you have to be this you know, righteous and you don't say this and you don't wear that and whatever. But I, I, I think it's been misconstrued in their minds a little bit because, um, you know, all of the things that embody having this good spirituality and connecting with yourself and with the universe is yes, that it's a huge juxta juxtaposition. Um, that's something that I still don't understand, to be honest. I think people search for spirituality for, for the wrong reasons. And, and that was, I think, a little bit of what might have been happening there um focusing more on what other people are doing rather than what they're doing um so yeah i, I feel it's all learning though i feel like a lot of people will watch the show back and and gain some self-awareness i absolutely agree on that point and having gone down the spiritual path a little bit myself i've always been taught to be wary of anyone that says that they have all the answers so i definitely had some red flags raised watching the show hundred percent hundred percent now i know you obviously don't know what's going to be on the show when it airs and you know the editing process is so interesting so i was curious if there's anything that they didn't put on the show that you wish they would have featured um well okay for one when i first moved to byron elias and i met on the beach and he taught me to surf and i'm so sad it didn't make it in there because i nailed it so that was the one thing i watched back and i was like oh <laughs> it wasn't relevant, I guess, to the overall, like what, you know, story of what's happened there. But I was like, ah, oh, damn it. I was like, I would have loved for the world to see me just nail it first go. Um, and also, uh, you know, the conversation that I had with Elle right, right towards, you know, the end when we were wrapping up filming, she had wanted to reach out and speak to me a lot earlier and, and did try to. So I think that, um, you know, yeah, if anyone, if anyone came across more harsh, it was, it, I would say it was her because, um, that so, there's so many things that you don't see, um, that, that happen 
during filming and yeah so I think people people have been quite hard on her and unfair on her because she she did try to reach out to me a lot sooner than what everybody sees okay so while you were surfing were you worried about sharks at all <laughs> um physical sharks no I love sharks um and it's I think it's kind of part and parcel of being in this beautiful country this part of the world that you know that they're, they're part of um the marine ecosystem and we respect that and love them and um you, you kind of can't be scared of them also i'm glad that l cleared the air i did see on nathan's instagram that she was being attacked online yeah um and uh, honestly i think i think people really need to have a think about um that whole situation if people are attacking her because they think she's a bully but then they're bullying her. It just doesn't really make any sense. Um, I would never ever want anyone to say anything nasty on my behalf. Um, or, you know, I know that some people think that they're doing the right thing, but I don't endorse that in any way for whatever reason. Um, and I, I just hope that, you know, if we're going to go ahead and shoot a season two, that um, people can see um, other sides of her because she is, she, she is an incredible person and very interesting person. Well, anyway, changing things up a little bit, I am so excited about your new single coming out and all the music that you're doing. I'm curious, what inspired you to write Liars? So Liars actually wasn't going to release it as a single. Um, it was it was one that I wrote when I was living in Byron and having a really hard time and I was in like a kind of dark space. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it was a little while ago, so I don't feel, I, I, I feel emotionally while well, I'm connected to it, but it's also, I'm a little bit removed from that situation now, but it was really just about feeling like you're going into a situation and completely blind and you just don't really know where you can turn to and you don't know who you can trust and it skews your, um, your, your ability to be able to judge people and, and, and your perception of reality. Um, and of course this is all happening while there's cameras around. So it's, yeah, it's very isolating feeling. And that's kind of what it was about. I'm so excited to listen to it. I'll definitely be downloading it on March 31st. What else is next for you musically? Yeah, so Liars is gonna come out um, globally on the 31st of March, which I'm super excited about because when you on the show, you see snippets of it, but to, uh, we've recorded a proper studio version and to get to hear it from start to finish, I think will be really cool for everyone. So that's coming out. Um, singles three and four are ready to go. Um, I had said, obviously last year, I was working towards an album and um, between my manager and I, we've decided we're gonna probably just drop some singles first. I would love to tour. I would love to come to the States. That's my ultimate goal. Um, and yeah, just to be able to put my music out and to connect with people, which is kind of what I've already been able to start doing just to continue to do that would be absolute dream come true, so. Now in the closing scene, we see you leave Byron Bay. It was a very emotional scene. And I'm just curious, are you glad that you ultimately left Byron Bay? Uh, yeah. Yes, I am. Um, I think, would I give it another go? Maybe. Uh, um, I think it was the right time for me to go. I think it was at that point, I think everyone just needed to take a step back and to stop trying to, you know, when you're trying to make something work and I felt like I was beating my head against a brick wall. Um, so yeah, I thought it was very necessary for me to take a step back. And since I've been back on the coast, I've recalibrated my mental state and gotten in a good position and gotten happy and been able to have conversations with um, the people who I met in bar and the people that you see on the show. Um, and yeah, just have like real proper conversations and clear the air and everything. And we're, we're in a pretty good place. I hung out with Saskia and Jess. We went to a day's bar the other day, went down to Byron. And um, yeah, I think to be able to approach it again with a clear, um, clear mind, um, yeah, is, is ultimately a good thing. But I am happy I went back to the Gold Coast. Listen, I went to an all girls school and can really identify with what you went through. I absolutely love Saskia's style and I actually, I went on her Instagram and found a Zara outfit she was wearing and I literally ordered it. She is an amazing, amazing style icon and I am going to follow her just for that. No, she is legitimately so stylish and just really cool. 
She's so cool to be around. She just knows what's up. Do you think you'll do another season? I'm really hoping that Netflix will announce it because we were left with so many loose ends. I can't imagine Netflix not tying things up with a season two. Yeah, I agree. Definitely want to do another season <laughs> and see me be happy. It was so funny. Like I, my dad rang me the day after the show dropped and we had this big conversation. He lives in New Zealand, so he stayed up all night and watched it. Um, and, uh, and he said, you know, I don't know that they're going to ask the emo girl back for season two. And I was like, oh, but I'm not. I'm like the happiest girl ever. Like I want people to see me be happy and not just be like beaten down and sad all the time. So, you know, the pandemic was happening while you guys were filming. But what I really liked was that it wasn't featured prominently because you guys were living pretty freely and things were pretty safe where you were living. Uh, but when did filming wrap? I couldn't even tell. Um, it was filmed last year, so we're very much during pandemic, but the Gold Coast and Byron is in this little pocket of the world where we, we had managed to keep the cases out and we could actually, for the most part, live like normal. Um, yeah, it was, it was weird. It was really weird. And especially here on the Gold Coast, um, you know, I guess that has to do with border closures and whatnot, but we ha we were in a little bubble where we could kind of pretend that it wasn't happening for a little bit, which was obviously we know it was and it's awful, but yeah, it, for us, it was an escape too. So this is like a really selfish question, but my dream man is Liam Hemsworth and like both of the Hemsworths are my celebrity crushes. So I was chatting with my friend from Melbourne and she was saying that the Hemsworths live in Byron Bay and I selfishly need to know, did you see Liam or Chris when you were in Byron Bay? Yeah, actually, everyone has a Hemsworth story in Byron um, and I thought this is crap. Like that you, they're not here, you never see them. And I went to dinner at um, Bang Bang, this beautiful restaurant in Byron, and I'm just sitting there having dinner and my friend was like, oh, Chris and Liam are like sitting behind you. <laughs> and I was like, like act natural. <laughs> um, yeah, I got up and went to the bathroom. I walked past, I was like, okay, how can I just be as cool as possible? So I was like, hey. And then, and Chris was like, hey. And I walked away and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> gonna go home and die i would absolutely spaz out if i saw them i would truly have to leave the room nah i did not handle it i was like watching them the whole time no but brian's really cool there everyone's so chill there so i think that's why it, big public figures gravitate towards that um part of the world because people are just really relaxed no one's up there asking for photos and stuff like that I've never been to Byron Bay, but it kind of seems like Australia's Hamptons or something. Yeah, pretty. Yeah, I could. I, I've never been to the States, but um, I can imagine that's the same kind of vibe. It's like a little getaway. Listen, we need to change that. You absolutely need to visit the States. I feel like you'd be welcomed with open arms. You book the flight, I'm there. <laughs> I was seriously like, that's my number one goal since I was a little girl. I was like, I moved to LA. I'm gonna sing. That was, that was always my thing. So yeah, so we, we do want people to love the show over where you guys are and you know. Well, I spoke to Alex and he says he makes it to LA quite often for work. So you need to hop on one of these work trips and the three of us need to go out on the town. So you make sure you go out. on a night when you're like prepared to send it. Cause he's like, go hard, then go home, but always go hard first. Is Alex a wild card? Yeah, and you know what? He actually didn't touch a drop of alcohol the entire time we were filming because he's like, I need to have my wits about me. And I was like, I need to do the opposite. So <laughs> so I was like, I was like the bit of a booze hag when we were filming. And um, I saw him for the first time after we finished filming and he was like, let's go out for drinks. So I couldn't believe he was saying it. And then he went hard and I was like, yeah, Animal was well and truly let out of the cage. <laughs> So what's next for you after Byron Bay's? What are you doing in the near future? I want to hear everything. Um, just music. Um, really, really hoping to get over to the States. That's the ultimate goal. I, I'd love to work with um, some songwriters and make a pop record. Jack Antonoff is like my ultimate. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and just be creating. And tell everyone where we can find Liars on March 31st. 
It's just a link in my Instagram bio. So I'll post about it again today um, and just make sure everybody's got it. Follow the link. It's the top link on the link tree um, and pre-save because honestly, it makes such a huge difference. If Spotify can see that people are pre-saving, um, you know, then they're going to want to put it on more playlists and it helps, helps me. So yeah. And you, and you're going to love it. Like it's a great track. <laughs> and listen, we are really hoping for a second season of Byron Bay's. It's going to be an incredible second season. So I really hope Netflix doesn't let us down. Yes, me too. We have to like commission Netflix and say, make sure you make it happen. Um, uh, the best place to find all my stuff is on my Instagram. It's saint.james.music. Um, and if you lose that, if you watch the show, our little Instagram handles come up, um, throughout the show, that's the best place to find me, or you can just Google as well. Um, and any kind of news, any content, all that kind of stuff will all go through there. So, and, and DM me cause I'm replying to everyone. I don't reply to anything negative, but if you DM, you want to reach out and say, hello, I like live for it. I love hearing that I'm connecting with people. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Sarah. I'm such a huge fan of yours and I can't wait to see everything that you do next. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me and so much love to America. I love you guys. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening. Sarah was such a delightful guest. Uh, I can't believe she zoomed in all the way from Australia. I'm such a huge fan of Byron Bay's. If you're listening to this and you haven't watched it yet, please go run over to Netflix, watch the show. It's an incredible show. It's everything from the scenery that we love. It feels kind of like going on vacation uh, to just um, crazy love triangles, crazy feuds. It reminds me of the early days of some of my favorite reality TV shows. And I just, I think everyone needs to watch it. Give it three episodes. You'll be absolutely hooked. I really want to see it come back from, for a second season and go give Sarah a follow. She's honestly such a delightful person. Alex is as well. Um, I've interacted with both of them and just really, really like them and can't wait to get out to Australia so that I can meet them in person. But anyway, you guys, that's the show for today. Thank you so much for listening in and I'll see you all next week.